In this video, we're going to learn about the saute method. Saute is a dry heat cooking method that's going to use high heat with a small amount of oil. Saute is generally used for smaller, uh, thinner cuts of meat, uh, but the same principles can be used for searing. Um, so we reference searing in our roasting video, so uh, you can reference uh, this technique to get that nice crust on the outside uh, of a product before roasting it. So it's going to be particularly important for saute that we start with a hot pan. Um, so I'm going to uh, determine whether this pan is hot in a few different ways. Uh, the first is I can put my hand over this preheating pan and just feel whether I feel that heat kind of radiating off uh, of the pan. And when I hold my hand uh, close to this pan, I do feel uh, some of that heat. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my uh, oil to the pan. Uh, I'm just using a regular cooking oil. Um, you could certainly use clarified butter or you know, whatever fat you choose to use. The fat is gonna be the next way that I can tell whether or not uh, my pan is nicely heated. And for a nice heated pan, uh, I'm gonna look for kind of a shimmery quality to the oil. So you can see, and I'll sh try to show you on the camera here, when I pull my pan back and then let the oil go down, I see that kind of shimmery, it almost looks like the surface of the ocean with that kind of shimmery, I'll show you again. I pull down, see that kind of shimmer that I get where it collects, it's not necessarily so smooth, it has like a, a shimmer, almost wavy quality to it. Uh, that's going to be a really good indication uh, that my pan is nicely preheated. So my pan is preheated here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my chicken ready. I'm gonna go ahead and season with just a little salt and pepper. Make sure it's nicely coated here. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my chicken to the pan and I'm gonna make sure that I'm going presentation side down. So whatever side uh, we think the customer is going to uh, be seeing, what's gonna be served uh, face up is gonna go down to the pan first. And there's my final quality indicator that my uh, chicken, is, excuse me, that my pan is nice and hot. Um, I got that really nice sizzle when I added it to the pan. And that's exactly what I want to see. I see that fat starting to uh, splatter a little bit. Uh, I hear that nice sizzle. I have steam coming out. That's telling me that my pan is nice and hot. And we get that nice brown on my chicken. Okay, so we're gonna let this um, sear until it's about halfway cooked and then we're only going to flip it one time. Um, it's gonna be important uh, that we're not like pressing down on it, trying to get it to cook quicker. We're not, you know, poking, prodding, uh, what have you. Um, Cause we're trying to develop that really nice crust and uh, by leaving it alone, <laughs> we're gonna help it develop that nice crust. Um, we're gonna look for some quality indicators that it's uh, halfway cooked. Um, some of those are going to be, we're going to start seeing uh, this kind of white line that we're starting to see form. That's the chicken going from that raw look to that kind of white um, or off-white color. It's going to start moving up the chicken. We're going to start to see some juices kind of spilling out of the sides and developing on the top. And we'll also start to see a little bit of brown develop around the edges. Uh, I'm going to monitor my heat here. I don't know if you saw, but I kind of inadvertently just went and turned my heat down a few clicks. Um, this pan is uh, nice and hot right now, and I do want to continue to hear that nice sizzle. I want to see some browning form. But what I really want is I want that chicken to be nicely browned on the outside, on that top side, when I go and do my initial turn. I don't want it to brown too quickly um, so that, you know, it's brown and ready to turn when the chicken's only a quarter of the way cooked. Okay, so my chicken is uh, ready to flip, and I can tell for a couple of reasons. You can see here that this white line has started to move up the side of the chicken, and I've started to have some juices start to come out. Um, so I think this chicken is about halfway cooked. You can see when I go to turn it, it very easily 
releases from the pan. I don't have to try to convince it by scraping it up, uh, what have you. Uh, I think these two pieces were ready. I think this final piece needs uh, another second. It was a little bit thicker and that's okay. Um, we're gonna kind of work with each of these pieces as an individual um, so that they're all done um, when they're done. All right. So this final piece of chicken is starting to show those quality indicators that we talked about. That white line is starting to progress up. Some juices are starting to flow out. Easily releases from the pan. And now that I've done uh, my first turn, I'm gonna go ahead and switch out my tongs because uh, I was handling raw chicken with these. All right, so at this point, we're just gonna go ahead and let these uh, finish cooking. Uh, we wanna see a nice brown along the bottom. Uh, and then we're going to uh, gauge whether these are finished cooking uh, with a meat thermometer. Wanna make sure we're using a well-calibrated thermometer. Current uh, standards for chicken, uh, 165 degrees for 15 seconds. But check with your local uh, county health code uh, to see that that is truly the current regulation. Okay, uh, I think these small pieces of chicken are probably done. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my meat thermometer, I'm gonna insert it into the thickest part of my chicken. And I'm about 155, and this is why we rely on a meat thermometer. Because um, I probably would have said, oh yeah, these are done and taken them out. But when I use that meat thermometer, I can see, well, it needs to go another 10 degrees. And that 10 degrees, uh, you know, can make the difference, especially when working with a, uh, uh, a product like chicken. All right, let's go ahead and temp this again. Yeah, perfect. We're right at 165. It's gotta be 165 degrees for 15 seconds. Uh, so we'll give it just a second to hold. Go ahead and get these out. Again, like I said, that final piece was a little bit thicker. So again, we're kind of treating these as individuals. I'm gonna let this cook one more second. We'll temp this and then we'll go on to make our pan sauce. So while this is finishing cooking, um, let's go ahead and chat about pan sauces. So a pan sauce is a really common uh, sauce to serve with uh, sauteed food. Um, you can see in the bottom of the pan here, we have all of this delicious fond, all of those juices that kind of came out of the chicken in the cooking process. Um, have kind of browned to the bottom of the pan and they're gonna be a really nice flavor base for a sauce. Um, so we're gonna start our pan sauce and I am perfectly 167, exactly. Great, so I'm gonna start by deglazing my pan. In this case, I'm using wine. Um, but you could use, ooh, hello. Uh, but you could use brandy um, or just the stock that you're using, uh, lemon juice. Uh, you can really deglaze with any liquid. Um, but you do want to make sure that you're scraping the bottom of the pan to remove that font. And can you see um, that, that the bottom of that pan is nice and clean now and all that nice brown has uh, incorporated into the wine that I added. Okay. So pan sauces are a pretty broad category of sauce. Uh, there is no one right or wrong. For this pan sauce, I used a little bit of wine. Uh, I'm gonna use uh, a little bit of chicken stock. And I'm gonna add just a little bit of herb and garlic. And I'm just gonna let this sauce reduce uh, until it gets to a nice light nappe, and that's gonna be my, my pan sauce. Again, um, 
possibilities are kind of limitless. So I could use, um, I could add some cream if I wanted a nice creamy sauce. Um, I could use any alcohol to deglaze. I could use wine uh, as my liquid. I could use different herbs and spices, uh, what have you. Uh, I could thicken with roux in the end. In this case, we're just going to mount with a little bit of butter. Um, meaning once the sauce is reduced, we're gonna add a little bit of whole butter, swirl it around, gonna give a nice shine and mouth feel uh, in the end. All right, so my sauce is pretty nicely reduced. I'm gonna add at this point, just a little bit of whole butter into my sauce. I'm just gonna swirl it around. Again, this is called mounting with butter. Uh, it's gonna give my sauce a really nice mouth feel, um, nice shine as well. Butter's mostly melted. I'm gonna give it just a little taste here. Mm. You know, I didn't add any seasoning to this, um, but my chicken uh, was seasoned and there was enough seasoning on the chicken that my sauce is actually really nicely seasoned. So I don't need to add any more. Um, if it was a little bland, I could certainly add more salt, pepper, you know, some acid if it needed it. Just gonna give it one final stir to combine. That nice pan sauce can go right over my chicken there. All right, there we have it, my uh, sauteed chicken with pan sauce. So let's review. Saute is a dry heat cooking method that uses a small amount of fat with high temperature. Next, when flipping food in a saute pan, food should easily release from the pan. If it's clinging or stuck to the pan, it's probably not ready to flip yet. Give it a little more time and then attempt flipping again. Finally, sauteing takes very well to pan sauces and there are endless possibilities for pan sauces. So tr try out different flavors and liquids uh, and come up with a really interesting pan sauce for your saute food. 